Hi guys, welcome to uh, Rad's workshop. My name is Rav and Rad's in the shop. Right, in this video I thought we'd address the subject of shear scraping and shear scrapers. Um, I've been turning a little over 10 years now and of those 10 years I've been shear scraping approximately seven year. Now I've tried many different uh, scraping techniques in those ten year and so far shear scraping has been by far the best. Um, it's one of the easiest and it leads the best surface finish or in, in my eyes it does in my view. So let's get on. The first one I'm going to show you is probably my favourite shear scraping tool. Uh, it's made by Robert Sorby. Uh, don't ask me the model number because I haven't got a clue. But come on, you can't really go long, wrong. That's what it looks like. It's probably about 10 inches long. A little handle that's just the right size. Small shaft with a teardrop cutter on the end. Um, they're just brilliant. They're that good. I've got three of them. Okay? And no, I'm not being greedy. Uh, basically what I do is, in my shed I haven't got the luxury of having enough space to keep a grinder out all the time. So what I do is, I bought three of these, I sharpened them up. When one goes dull, instead of having to go and get a, sh a grinder out and sharpen it, instead of having to do all that, I just grab another one and carry on. That way... When, when you start wood turning, you sort of get in the zone, you know, to have to run to a grinder and start sharpening it up and whatnot, it just it interrupts your flow. So, by having three of them, if one dulls, I just reach, grab another, carry on. It keep, you know, I keep in that zone, I keep in that flow. It doesn't interrupt the technique. So, they really are brilliant. Um... The cutters are replaceable. The, I think they're roughly about eight pound, eight UK pound each, uh, which sounds quite expensive for a cutter, I suppose. But then again, they are they are M2 steel, uh, and they do last a very long time. This this one is is the one that's had the most use. Now I've had this for. Crikey, six year easy, maybe longer, maybe seven year. And uh, as you can see, it's still got meat on the uh, on the cutter yet. It's, you know, there's still quite a few sharpenings left in it. So eight pound over seven year. Come on, it's not exactly an expensive tool, but uh, they're brilliant rounded so you can use them at whatever angle you want if you want to use them at 45 degree shear scraping angle you can if you want to use them at 60 you can if you want to use them at 30 you can it's up to you they're just a brilliant 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 tool highly recommend them if you want to get into shear scraping guys get yourselves one of these they are brilliant right we'll, we'll carry on this is another robert sorby shear scraper this one's got a a square section shank so that when you put it on your your tool rest the cutters presented at 45 degrees to the wood for coming that way then you would just turn it over again it's presented at 45 degrees and you would go the other way um, they make two types of cutter for it there's this one which is like a blown up box if you can imagine a square where the flat sides are rounded, well that's what this is. And they do a fully round, rounded cutter. Now this sort of blown up box section cutter has no <coughs> excuse me, has no advantage over the round cutter that I've found. Um, when I first bought this tool, I bought two round cutters and I bought two blown up box shaped cutters 
uh, and that's why it's got it on now I'm trying to I'm trying to get through the uh, the blown up box ones first the rounded off box ones first before I start on the uh, the round cutters but they're very good especially for people that's just getting into shear scraping you know you can't really go wrong because that cutter's presented at the right at, at the correct angle for you and with it being square section it's nice and uh, stable on your uh, on your tool rest uh, also the co the corners are slightly rounded as well so you're not liable to nick into your tool rest it's a nice tool really nice tool um, ideal for people that's just starting into shear scraping all right what have we got next oh we've got this one here this robert sober now this one i bought fairly recently um, and i must admit it's quite a large tool it's quite a heavy beefy tool it feels really good in your hand but i'm not impressed with how it works and i think the main reason is the cutters aren't big enough if the cutters had been 20 percent bigger it would have been a really cracking tool um, the bar has got a flat side milled into it so it sits nice and uh, stably on your on your tool rest and this knurled section here actually undoes and this you pull it out slightly and then it twists and goes in and locks in in three different positions uh, there's this position where it's facing to the left then you can have it like a normal scraper would be horizontal and then there's a position where it faces towards the right for shear scraping um, but I'm not very impressed with it as I said the cutters are that little bit too small in my eyes it's a real shame it does accept different shaped cutters as well there's a, a round one there's a, a blown up box like one like I've just showed you like that one and there's a also there's a, a diamond shaped cutter as well that they make for it and you can also get the cutters in three different materials there's a there's high speed steel M2 high speed steel like this then there's M2 high speed steel that's coated in titanium nitride and then there's uh, yeah tungsten carbide as well uh, I've got all three of those and uh, I don't really see any advantage in any of them I just use now ba basically I just use the, uh, the M2 um, but I don't use it a great deal anyway I'm just not impressed with it at all so we'll move on to my last shear scraper that I can think of I might have other ones hiding around but the, the last one that I can think of is this monster look at the size of that it's a beast this bar is three quarter inch thick solid steel it's a beast of a shear scraper um, the thing that this does that no other shear scraper does is this head is articulated it can go all the way around to the other side so basically it can go from there to there okay you can use it as a shear scraper on this bar it has two flats milled into it so you put it on your tool rest and it's set for going that way turn it over and it's set for coming this way it automatically sets it at 45 degrees now if you was to swivel that head round so that this bottom became the top swivel it round you can use the, the curved section and use it like a normal flat scraper and you can uh, as you swivel that round you can act, make it like a negative rake scraper in fact so uh, it does have that advantage but i only ever use it as a, a shear scraper now the one disadvantage of it is that it is huge it is a, a monster of a shear scraper and it's only really any good in large bowls by large bowls i'm meaning 11 12 inch and upwards 
um, if you tried shear scraping a six inch ball with this it wouldn't really work out very well uh, oh I forgot to mention the steel as well this steel is the same steel as what Kel McNaughton uses for his hollowing tools it's super super hard very hard it holds a, an edge superbly well um, I've never sharpened this cutter since I got it uh, and I've used it numerous times so it's very very hard steel um, it's made by K Kel McNaughton in New Zealand it's just a brute of a tool if you um, if you make huge balls you know um, 18 20 22 24 inch then this is the shear scraper for you it is huge it is massive and it is heavy and strong you know you could hang that over the tool rest you know and you're not going to get that that jitter or that fluttering it's just a monster of a of a shear scraper right guys i think that about sums up what shear scrapers i use uh, there may be a couple of others which i forgot about uh, if i do remember about them i shall fetch them up in a different video at some time right the next video i think we're going to concentrate on hollowing tools so if you'd like to join me for that i will be very very pleased but for now i'll bid you a fond farewell and i'll catch you later on the next video guys take care in your workshops watch those fingers those eyes and most importantly those lungs because you can't wood turn very well without them catch you later guys bye bye now take care